Good morning, High Tides. Have you guys been listening to the news lately? Also, do you guys know anything about North Korea? Let's start today's episode with a little history lesson. North Korea is a country connected to China east of Beijing, south of Shenyang, and west of Japan. North Korea was once just considered Korea when it wasn't split into north and south. From 1910 to 1945, Korea was occupied by the Japanese during the Russo-Japanese War. Then at the end of World War II in 1945, it was divided into North and South Korea along the 38th parallel where the South was occupied by USA and the North by the Soviets. The Supreme Leader of North Korea, Terenti Shitkov, in 1946 supported King Sung Il to be chairman of the Provisional People's Committee for North Korea. During the Korean War on June 25, 1950, North Korea invaded South Korea with intentions of taking over. The UN intervened with the US leading the fight. When the US started almost reaching the border of North Korea to China, China intervened as well as changing the war completely. Fighting ended on July 27, 1953 with an armistice that approximately restored the original boundaries between North and South Korea. More than one million civilians and soldiers were killed in the war. As a result of the war, almost every substantial building in North Korea was destroyed. The relative peace between the South and the North following the armistice was interrupted by border skirmishes, celebrity abductions, and assassination attempts. The North failed in several assassination attempts on South Korean leaders such as in 1968, 1974, and the Rangoon bombing in 1983. Tunnels were found under the DMZ and war nearly broke out over the axe murder incident at Panmunjom in 1976. For almost two decades after the war, the two states did not seek to negotiate with one another. In 1971, secret high-level contacts began to be conducted culminating in the 1972 July 4th North-South Joint Statement that established principles of working toward peaceful reunification. The talks ultimately failed because in 1973, South Korea declared its preference that the two Koreas should seek separate memberships in international organizations. Kim Sung-il died of a heart attack in 1994 in the midst of a standoff with the United States over North Korean nuclear weapon development. Kim declared a three-year period of national mourning before officially announcing his position as the new leader. On December 17, 2011, the Supreme Leader of North Korea, King Jong-il, died of a heart attack. His youngest son, King Jong-un, was announced as a successor. Over the following years, North Korea continued to develop its nuclear arsenal despite international condemnation. Notable tests were performed in 2013 and 2016. The quality of life for their own citizens is as something you see in a horror movie. The country has many belligerent and strange laws that no other country might have. The country is often compared to Hitler's Nazi Germany due to the excessive labor camp punishment for crime. It is pretty blatant that the quality of life in North Korea is unlike most countries. North Korea has detained four U.S. citizens on suspicion of hostile acts against the regime, the state-run Korean Central News Agency reported early May 2017. As of today, North Korea holds no nuclear missile that can reach mainland America. That's what the U.S. fears the most, that North Korea builds a missile strong enough to reach us. Is detaining U.S. citizens a hostile move towards the U.S.? We do need more peace in the world. Hi Tides, if you want to have fun and learn at the same time, you've got to check out the new Miami Science Museum. Hey High Tides, have you guys heard of the new sign? Well, on May 8th, the grand opening of the Philip and Patricia Frost Museum took place. The Frost Art Museum is appealing to all ages and family memberships range from $100 to $200, so feel free to join today. With eight different exhibitions, there's something for everyone. You can explore the fascinating science behind vibrant ecosystems, the miraculous human body and mind, the adventure of flight and the frontier of innovation and technology. The museum contains a state-of-the-art planetarium with 200 plus seating, a three-story aquarium with plenty of different sea life from all around the globe and even some native species. To learn more visit www.frostscience.org. That looks like a really cool place. We've had our yearly Beach High Art Show. Let's check it out. Hi, my name is Tom Virgin. I teach art at Miami Beach Senior High. The show that's up right now 
is our annual student art show with work from Ms. Honkera, me, Ms. Money, and all our kids. And it's from a whole range of classes from begin, beginning level 2D design to AP classes. I've worked for 25 years teaching art and I, I gotta say that the work we put up is solid tens. Some of it's beginning work and it's a solid ten for beginning work. Some of it is AP work and it's just great work. The best work the AP kids did, sadly, has already traveled to the AP uh, offices so it can be evaluated for their scores. But the rest of it, I think uh, you get a consensus. It's the best stuff that we got to show. I make art too. I'm a printmaker, I make books, I make public art, I'll have work up in Miami-Dade Public Library for another week or so. It's a big show on the second floor of the main library. Saturday there's a workshop with printed books and kids will be able to color and bind books and see the other work that's in the show. Okay, so I'm Ms. Money and I teach fine arts at Miami Beach Senior High and I'm the art club sponsor. Um, the art festival is a chance to sort of show other students and teachers how much talent the students here at Beach High have um, so that they can see another side of their students' lives. Pretty much you just have to take art and we just put up most of the finished or some of the more well-finished pieces in the show. Yes, um, I paint and I also do illustrations, so I illustrate uh, poetry books mostly. I would say I really like uh, Whistler paintings because he makes these really, really dark seascapes that I really like to look at for a while. Um, it actually feels pretty good simply because I spent so much time working on my portrait. It was in the back, but I spent a couple of weeks working on it square by square, even though Mr. Virgin told me not to do it, but I wanted to make sure everything looked right and actually accurate. Um, I joined the class simply because I am an artist myself and a photographer. This is just one example, but um, I really want to be a photographer when I'm older and working in a career. And I just needed this class just to get the basics of it because drawing does connect it to photography in a way. But I am going to be working in the arts for sure. Like this summer I'm doing a pre-college program at the Maryland Institute College of Art. So it's going to be really exciting. Lots of great art and congrats to all the students. But most of all, congratulations to the class of 2017. As students across the country graduate from college this month, they must decide not only what career they want to pursue, but also where they wish to pursue it. In general, coastal and southern states, as well as the west coast states like California and Washington, tend to retain and gain the most college educated people. Here in the Sunshine State, high school graduation rate increased by 2.8 percentage points over the last year and has increased significantly during the past 11 years. The rate rose from 59.2% in 2003 to 80.7% in 2016. Congratulations to all the graduates, especially our very own high tides. Good luck. Another year, another senior class. Good luck to all of you.